Excellent news, yeah. It's a little bit surprising. It was never given that it might wake up again. It, it was hoped that it could. Absolutely. We thought as this uh, comet drew ever nearer to the sun, the heat from that sun, the light, would eventually, maybe, wake up the lander because some of its solar panels, we'd hoped, were still in the sun. And lo and behold, that's exactly what's happened. So it's woken up. What's it said? It sent a little bit of data, not for very long. It was about 85 seconds or so. Uh, but in that time, it was enough to say it had, had actually been awake for several days, or comet days, that is, um, and no one had been listening. So, oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh. So That's really hurtful. It was a sad fillet. D don't you all, all of a sudden have an image of um, of C three PO sort of, you know? Kind of yeah, I think it's R two D two. R two D two is the cute one. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, no, this little lander had uh, somehow struggled up against the the freezing temperatures. Uh, it's been down as low as minus one hundred and sixty degrees, which is incredibly cold. Wow. Um, just am amazingly, at the same time, around the same time as this woke up. Uh, ESA was having a press conference saying we think we may actually find its final resting place. We're just zooming in now on the surface of the, uh, of the comet. The error ellipse is in red and then the uh, little bright region. We think that might be the lander. Isn't that fantastic? And it woke up. <laughs> and it's even tweeted the fact that it's woken up. It has, yeah. You this is a tweet up on screen now. Oh, like, amazing. This, this, this little probe can tweet too. Please, this can you so tell us the background here? It's not so, actually it's not actually the probe tweeting, is it there? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a very dedicated um, Twitter follower uh, has been on behalf, or at least with Rosetta, Rosetta has been doing this. But yeah, look at this cartoon. It's so cute. It's got a little sleeping bag. As Virginia said, the rays, the sun dappling across its brow. And clearly it's been filling in the time by graffitiing on the rocks around it. I think it's been <laughs> yeah. counting, counting down the days till it wakes up. All right, so it's sent back data. We don't know yet what that data is. Yeah, it's just it's going to be simple telemetry. It's just going to let us know what oh, its sorry, condition. Simple what? Telemetry. Uh, it's it's si position. Simple to sum. Simple to sum. <laughs> um, its position. Um, what's been happening? We're very interested in uh -huh. what's happened since it landed. We only got sixty hours worth of data, and that alone has revolutionised our understanding of the solar system. And as I understand, I think scientists are hoping that if it's awake now and functioning, it might now be able to drill down and perhaps get some samples from not the core but some inner part of the comet, which yep. is key to establishing just. What what role it played in the beginning of the universe and perhaps bringing water to our planet. Absolutely. The, the deep samples, or relatively deep, as you say, a few inches deep, that's a key uh, science goal. There's also the hope to just see a comet explode into life around us. That's the, the uniquely close-up view of this process and completely unknown process of how the comet's tail forms. Yes. We will now be able to catch it. This was this is a boon that we weren't expecting. But how much heat can it handle as it gets closer to the sun? Yeah, so it's going to... Uh, it may be in danger of being destroyed by the very comet tails it's trying to watch form. These right. big plumes of material shoot through the comet. Yep. Um, assuming it survives that, it should be able to handle the heat relatively fine because it's, it's actually partially shaded. <laughs> so what nearly killed it in the deep, dark, uh, frozen yeah. parts of the orbit will protect it from the intense heat as it gets closer. There you go. So a botched landing actually has some benefits as well. <laughs> actually, well, the botched landing ended up giving us a sample of many different places across the ah, surface yeah, of the comet. Yeah, because it, it skipped across the surface. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can it actually, as it gets this um, element from the core, can it internally analyse it itself and send the data back? Is that how it works? Yes, absolutely. It has Amazing. all the little um, chemical uh, traces or whatever organic material, and indeed that's already something it has discovered on the surface, yeah. it can um, find and tell us exactly what's there. It's, it's just an amazing, to have all of this science from a washing machine size probe. <laughs> oh, it's, it's terrific. It's, it's, it's a red letter day for scientists right around the world. Oh, it? Everyone's, every, I've, I've heard some of the staff, uh, mission scientists have been crying all weekend since they realised <laughs> this thing was still alive. That's so. really lovely. That's great. All right, so what's the time frame? How long are you thinking that we've got now for the life of Philae? Uh, so it's going to reach, the comet's going to reach its closest approach at August and that's where we'll see if this, you know, impromptu sunshade from the overhanging rock will protect it. Uh, and then after that, it, uh, it may just continue for a couple of months after. Eventually, it will travel further away from the sun and, and will shut down. The Rosetta mission will continue to orbit. It's now essentially a moon of this comet and it will continue yeah. to keep watch forever. Until the 